in this class we will <coughs> be attempting a Latin American overview. We will be trying to see the connections between cinema, literature, society and politics in Latin America. Uh, we will be, it's a vast continent as you know very well and there are many countries and there are certain similarities but contrary to what some of us believe there are also many dissimilarities between um, the Latin American countries. We'll have time only to have a look at six of the countries in Latin America. Uh, each of these countries can boast of a long and distinguished tradition in both cinema and literature. We'll be having a look at at least one important film from each of these six countries which have emerged from a literary source. It can be a novel, a short story, or even a piece of journalism. The first film we'll be discussing is from Cuba, made by the master Tomas Gutierrez Alia. The film Memorias del Subdesarrollo or Memories of Underdevelopment is an adaptation of a novel by Edmundo Desnos. This is considered to be a masterpiece and it's a human study but also a political document, uh, an exercise in polemics, in passion, in poetry and in a strange kind of storytelling that embraces both the individual and the collective. It is the story of Sergio, a young man who, when the revolution comes to Cuba in 1959, decides not to leave the island, not even when his entire family choose to migrate to the United States. The film shows how Sergio stays back not because he agrees with the promises or the character of the revolution, but because true to his bourgeois class, he is vacillating, indecisive, cannot take responsibility for his actions, and is emotionally frozen. It is a film of great tension and some tenderness. In America Latina, mueren cuatro niños por minuto debido a enfermedades provocadas por la desnutrición. Al cabo de 10 años, hay 20 millones de niños muertos por esta causa, que es el mismo número de muertes que produjo la Segunda Guerra Mundial. This film brought Alia world renown. It is his most intellectual film and for almost half a century it has been the toast of film connoisseurs on account of both its radical politics and radical form.
todo sigue igual. Aquí todo sigue igual. Así de pronto parece una escenografía, una ciudad de cartón. Since we are talking about the revolution, a section of the Cuban populace opting for exile, others deciding to stay back, perhaps it would be in order to mention that there was great pressure on Alia to go into exile, especially when in course of time there came moments of friction between the filmmaker and the regime. Edmundo Desnos left for, the Ameri for America, as did the man who shot the film, Nestor Almendros. But Alia stayed back, saying that he might have had occasional problems with the new rulers, but he was convinced about the need, the necessity of the revolution. When we come to know this fact, this facet of the director's life, we see the film anew, afresh from a fresh angle. So here we have a novel, a literary work, a film born out of it, and then we have the politics of the film and the society, the new society, that the film depicts. From Cuba, we moved to Chile, where in the 90s, Silvio Cayosi made a film called La Luna en el Espejo, The Moon in the Mirror, based on a novel by the Chilean representative in the revolution, literary revolution that swept across Latin America, new, new Latin American literature. That author's name is Jose Donoso. Moon in the Mirror is a fable, can be read as a fable, a love story that is flawed on account of the authoritarian behavior of one of the three principal characters in the film. A father, an old father, who wants to keep his unmarried son in subservience and frowns at the romance he's having with a woman who lives very near. This film was much discussed for the dreamy artistry in which the film's political statement was steeped. This uh, delightful and disturbing work uh, is an oblique indictment of the repressive conditions suffered by Chile in the 70s and 80s when the military dictatorship of Pinochet was in vogue. This film of many dimensions combined the literary vision of Donoso with the interpretative skills of Cayosi to tell a profound and sad story between three elusive beings. A father 
who refuses to let go his control over his son, a son who struggles to escape from the stranglehold of the father, and Lucrecia, the woman who enters the narrative, the story, the life of the young man as an unsettling agent. This film needs to be seen again and again in order to understand what Donoso and Kayosi together meant to achieve. From Chile, we move on to Colombia and a film called Rodrigo Di No Futuro, a feature with a strong documentary flavor directed by a very important Colombian director named Victor Gaviria. Interestingly, Rodrigo Di No Futuro, which is about the doomed lives of young people in Medellin, the capital of the cocaine cartel in Colombia, does not have a conventional literary source. This film is does not owe its origin to a novel or a short story, but a newspaper report. A report filed in a local daily by an intrepid journalist named Angela Perez. And from that report, Gaviria fashioned an entire screenplay that showed how not just Rodrigo D, but so many of his fellows have no choice but to go along with the cocaine godfathers. From Colombia, we proceed to Brazil and a film called Cidade de Deus, City of God, which brought to its director, Fernando Mereles, an enviable international reputation. This is also about cocaine, the production, supply, consumption of cocaine in Brazil. It's based on a novel by Paulo Lins and indicates how, even in the midst of murder and mayhem, there is softness, there is tenderness, and even a little love between people. Ih, a galinha fugiu! We will now turn to two very important films, both emerging from Brazil and directed by one of the prime movers of the Cinema Novo movement in that country, namely Nelson Pereira dos Santos. The first, a black and white masterpiece, Veda Secas. It is about people who try to escape their fate by migrating from the waterless, parched Sertão in the northeast of Brazil to the cities where a new kind of disgrace awaits them. It 
which is based on an excruciating painful story by Graziliano Ramos, a great Brazilian writer. The same Santos also made Memories of Prison based on the experiences of Ramos in prison. Ramos was a committed member of the Communist Party and was falsely accused of being a part of a coup against the government and had to spend some years in jail. Ramos loved his wife and children no less than his political ideals. And all this comes out in this epic drama of arrested movement and the urge for freedom. Prison as a metaphor works memorably well in this film. Our next port of call, so to say, is Argentina, a country famous for Borges, Cortazar, and so many other great writers. The film we'll be visiting is called Yo la peor de todas, I the worst of all, based on a biography of Sister Juana de la Cruz, one of the principal poets of the Spanish Baroque period. Octavio Paz, the Mexican, he provides the literary source out of which the Argentine director Maria Luisa Bemberg fashions her enactment of Sister Juana's life. Un asunto más y grato. Carta de Palacio. El señor Virrey nos comunica que la nuestra será la primera comunidad religiosa que visite en México. ¿Qué dice? <laughs> el Virrey, el nuevo oh. Virrey. Él es el Medina Feli y él es una Manrique de Lara, de la familia del poeta, grandes de España. Y agrega, ardemos en deseos de conocer a vuestra Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, celebrada en España como la décima musa. It is important to say a few words about Sister Juana, who lived much before, long before her time. She was an illegitimate child and was sent off to the city. She was born in the countryside. She was sent off to the city. She was extremely intelligent and good looking. Many offers of marriage came her way, but she sought refuge within the walls of a nunnery. She was against the prevalent narrow morality that the Roman Catholic Church advocated. She was drawn to literature, especially poetry, and to music, and to philosophy and science. final country that uh, we will be dealing with is Mexico and the two directors we'll be concentrating on are Paul Ledak and Arturo Ripstein. Read Mexico Insurgente directed by Paul Ledak is based on the documentation by John Reed of the Mexican Revolution. It has a strong documentary flavor and concentrates on some of the iconic figures that made for that iconic event, namely the Mexican Revolution.
Arturo Ripstein has repeatedly used novels and stories as the basis for his films. Among his best known films are Principio e Fin, The Beginning and the End, based on a story by the Egyptian Nobel laureate Nagib Mahfouz, and Tiempo de Morir, based on a screen, the screenplay for which was written by two of Latin America's most eminent literatures, Marquez and Carlos Fuentes. <laughs> we have done in this class is to take a bird's eye view of the literary influences in new Latin American cinema. As you will find when you do your own further reading, these two movements, new Latin American literature and new Latin American cinema grew almost in tandem holding each other's hand, so to say. A lot of the writings took a very critical view of the past and tried to understand the present in terms of what had happened in the long history of pillage and brutalization of the continent and the respective countries. When the directors went through the novels or short stories, they found them so to say, so picturesque in the writing and so relevant historically, socially and politically speaking that they looked ready for cinematic picking. These literary outpourings did not escape the sensitive eyes of the auteurs among the Latin American filmmakers. Mm -hmm.